I have the pleasure to welcome everyone uh, to today's discussion, um, which goes under the title Big Tech, Journalism and New Copyright Rules, Who Will Win, Who Will Lose? Which is also kind of musical, as a as a I I happen to to discover by reading it out loud today. Um, well, my name is for those of you who don't know me. My name is Giulia Priora. I'm postdoctoral researcher here in Pisa at the Sant'Anna School of Advanced Studies, and I'm also an affiliated researcher at the Center for Media, Data, and Society at CEU in Budapest. I'm really really happy to serve as moderator today for this wonderful uh, discussion. The event is organized uh, by the Center for Media, Data and Society at the CEU Democracy Institute, which I personally thank uh, for the whole organization, the invitation and also for the technical support. Um, I think for those of you who are logged in in Zoom, I'll just briefly share a couple of technical information uh, that I got confirmation about just now. Well, as you see, the event is recorded and will also be made uh, available online on the center website and social media channels. So don't worry if you know someone who is missing out, uh, you will be able to share the link. Um, I ask everyone to mute their microphone when they're not speaking. So I will also do so myself. And I encourage everyone, since we are really like in an informal discussion, um, to raise their hands or use the chat box, or whatever you prefer to raise your questions or comments to the speakers. Obviously, if the question, if questions will flow also on Facebook in the streaming, then we will also try to collect them and address them to to our uh, speakers. So, very briefly about the topic of today's discussion. This is something very dear to me as uh, I'm also personally, I mean, I've been following very closely the whole reform process of copyright rules in Europe. And this process, just to remind uh, to you all, started actually a long time ago because it's since 1991 that in the European Union, we are trying to harmonize and modernize somehow more recently our national copyright systems. And in 2016, a proposal came up uh, to adopt a whole new directive on copyright in the digital symbol markets, which in other words could be also described as a directive modernizing copyright to make it fit for our digital life. So this directive is, as probably most of you know, is now reality. And uh, there has been a quite unforgettable uh, process of political negotiations and fired up debates, but now this piece of legislation has been adopted in 2019 and just two weeks ago, the deadline for transposition into national laws has passed. So that's something that really is not just reality because it's there within the body of EU rules that we have, but now all the member states are um, bound to embrace and to transpose in their national legal systems. So today's discussion will, uh, will be focused on one of the provisions of this directive. So there are many interesting topics, but Article 15 in particular is something that really touches upon the evolution of the press sector of today and potentially of tomorrow. So Article 15 introduces not only a new rule but also a, but actually more precisely a new right uh, a neighboring right for publishers of press content so the underlying intention of the eu legislator is to protect press publishers from the free riding activities of online intermediaries as we all know and in particular uh, these intermediaries are those platforms, those internet players that provide services like news aggregations, press review, news personalization, customizations, and actually use press content with or without seeking authorization to do so. So what is the solution that Article 15 suggests? Well, introducing a new right, a new neighboring right, means entitling European press publishers 
to prohibit or authorize the online use of, of press content. So obviously this means giving them the power to decide who does what, right, with their content, with their press articles. And by doing so, Article 15 on the one side brings um, press publishers to the negotiation tables with all the internet players willing to use their content. And on the other side, it entitles them to pursue legal action against unauthorized uses. So it's quite a remarkable power that is embedded in this provision. Now, why, according the, to the EU legislator, this is a good deal? This is a good solution? Well, sticking to the text of the directive and the explanations that the European Commission has provided, um, Article 15 is a good deal because of two main reasons. One, because it's balanced. So this power given in the, to, to press publisher rights is not limitless. It lasts only two years from the publication of the press article. It applies to information society service provider, but not to in, individual private internet users. It does not apply to hyperlinking or to individual words or short text. Um, the second reason why, according to the EU legislator, Article 15 is a good deal is the fact that it protects not only press publishers, but also journalists. Uh, it obliges press publishers, in fact, to share part of the revenues that they get from the authorization they release to platforms and internet actors with reporters and the authors and photo reporters and the authors of the content themselves now how big the piece of the cake that needs to be shared with the journalist shall be is something that the eu legislator leaves member states to decide so that's uh, one of the interesting bits to see in the upcoming months when the transposition of the directive will be uh, full in all the member states now, this new rule that I, I just outlined for you very briefly um, has caused very lively discussions. Um, it has cast also several doubts on its effectiveness, and there is generally a lot of curiosity about the way this Article 15 will play out in the European digital society and in the European press sector in particular. Today, I'm really glad and we are all very lucky to have uh, prominent experts on this topic who will be discussing with us the benefits and the problems of this new rule, which has become reality and we need to understand better in Europe. So I'll briefly introduce them and then I'll leave them the floor and, and start taking notes uh, with you all about what they say. Uh, we have Shusha Detrekoy, who, uh, who is a lawyer, consultant, and academic researcher uh, based in Budapest. He you now works, she has served as counsel for several online content providers and ISPs, and she insightfully contributes to the Center for Media Data and Society blog on a regular basis with spot on analysis of legal questions on copyright protection and online content and analyzing the related legal developments. We also have Ula, Ula Furgao, who is a postdoctoral researcher at CREATE Center at the University of Glasgow. Since her doctoral studies, she has been focusing exactly on the interplay between copyright and news. And uh, she has developed a specific focus on Europe, producing stunning works and publications, tackling both the author's and the end user perspectives. And last but not least, we have Morgan Splicher, who is a journalist, consultant to international and national media organizations and representation groups, president of the European Federation of Journalists since 2013, dedicated advocate of press freedom and authors' rights, and closely engaging with the reform of EU copyright rules on press content since its very onset. I really sincerely thank them for being here. I look forward to their contributions. And I think I will kick off this discussion by starting to ask one question, which is very much related to the context I just 
try to outline and provide the audience with. Uh, we are seeing a digital transition in the press con in the press sector, like many other sectors, obviously, which has been characterized by a first feeling of opportunity. So when the internet kicked off, everyone was really thinking of how many uses and in how many ways we could use this new network infrastructure. What we have now, I would say, is more of a bittersweet feeling of this content, especially in the press sector. So we have this content um, feelings from reporters, from press publishers, even from platforms themselves about the rules um, surrounding press articles and their distribution. So in light of this feeling of restlessness, do you think that Article 15 is a good contribution, brings actually good solutions to the economic imbalances that we, we see every day? Or do you think that actually it further complicates the scenario, bringing more problems to the press sector? And I would start actually with Zhuzha on this point. Uh, I think you are muted. I cannot hear you. Sorry, yeah. I use Teams, so I, I'm not used to Zoom. Uh, in my opinion, I guess that not much will change with Article 15. Uh, as far as I see, it, it's a three-sided market, this content provision market, not just in Hungary, but all over the world. And uh, it, it means that uh, publishers make the content for free, advertisers uh, paid for, for the surface, so the money came from, from the advertisers and users uh, could read the articles for free. And uh, with the platforms, more effective advertising solutions came, came to the scenario and uh, the advertising money went to the platforms because it was more effective and uh, the publisher uh, stayed or, or uh, mm, was let without uh, enough money for the content, so not much revenue. And uh, as far as I see or I think, uh, not much will change with Article 15, uh, because I think that two approaches might happen. So publishers wait for money from the intermediaries, basically, so the major platforms. And I think that uh, the major platforms will, uh, will choose from two approaches. One is the Facebook approach. Uh, I don't know if you have heard that uh, at the beginning of uh, June, Facebook sent out uh, a leave it or take it terms and conditions for the publishers. Uh, have you heard about it? that uh, photos will disappear from the content uh, shared by the users if uh, the publishers uh, don't sign these uh, terms and conditions or if they don't give pre-license for, for Facebook. And uh, despite of the outcry, uh, I think that uh, basically all the publishers send back pre-license for the Facebook because they don't want to lose traffic from Facebook. So this is one approach and the other approach might be uh, the approach of Google who, who will negotiate and pay for the publishers, but not for all the advertising solutions, only for, for the articles appearing in Google News. Uh, and I don't know if the audience of Google News is how big is the audience of Google News, but I don't think that it's a, a huge amount of visitors who, who use Google News. So the money uh, that the Google will pay for the publishers for articles in the Google News will be not, not a lot. So it's not enough for, for the survival of the publisher. So I think that uh, not much money will move with Article 15 and it won't be a solution for, for the publishers. 
Well, on this note, I would be curious to know whether Morgan agrees with with this uh, view. Nothing will change, or hardly something will change, actually, from the transposition of the new uh, press publishers, right? Uh, thank you, thank you for the flow and, and the question, and 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 uh, thank you to uh, for the invitation to to, to be here today. Um, I would say. Uh, to, 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 to this very interesting question. I have two answers on it. Uh, the, the, the first one is a more holistic answer because I think we need to have a more holistic approach to what, is the, what this is all about. Because you cannot, well, now we're looking specifically on Article 15 uh, from that directive, but this is just a part of the directive. You need to look at it in a, in a broader sense uh, it's, it's because you, it cannot stand alone. Article 15 is not something standing alone. It, it, it is, you, you have to link it up with also Article 18 and 1920, where you, where you have the provisions that there, there must be, um, uh, that the authors must be uh, remunerated in, in, in general and not only um, uh, appropriate, but also proportionate. It's actually staying there. There's the transparency and there's the model where you are right, have the right to be represented uh, as, as, uh, as journalists and as, as authors. The holistic approach is also two things. There was a wish for the EU Commission to close the gap. Close the gap because authors, performers, uh, and also publishers, uh, producers, they are losing money because uh, because of the, the it has not been adapted to the new new technology. So this is one thing. It's about uh, it, it, it's about the economical part of it. We know about that. The second part, which is actually equally important, this is about the moral rights, because you protect your moral rights by author's rights. To have your, to have your rights, your moral rights also when it comes to the, to, to, to the tech giants, uh, you, you have the tools to protect your work when it's further used. So it's not misused. You cannot protect your work against misusing if you don't have the rights. So, and, and it, it was absolutely on time to find new tools to get that right. So, so this, this is the more holistic approach to it. I, I, not, I know we have <laughs> not that much time to, but I, I would elaborate a lot on, on, on that part of it. But it's, it's actually much more important that it is written in, in the direct. When it comes to Article 15, it can, might, be, might well be that it, it won't make uh, the huge amount of money that's, uh, that uh, it is uh, 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 pre-seen that it, that it should. But if it doesn't, it's not because of the article, then it's because we are not able to, uh, to join forces in the way that we, we should be able to join forces. If the publishers uh, across Europe, together with the journalists, together with the authors, because this is, I think this is a key, if, you, if we are able to do this together, then we, can, we will have a, a strong position uh, uh, in negotiation with the tech giants. And then we can make good deals for all parties because then it would also be, be much easier for, for everybody uh, to, uh, to, to, to share and to, to use and so on and so forth if you make big uh, pan-European extended licensing models, for instance. Then it will be easy. You will solve. You will solve most of the problems by doing this. I see Article 15 here as one first little step in that direction. Uh, we, it could have been much better, but if you look around Europe now, it is too divided the way that uh, it is dealt with uh, Article 15, and that's really a pity. Uh, but we still have chances to 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 improve it and make it better. Thank you so much. I think you just set the perfect ball to Ula, who's been working by the way, not only on Article 15, but also on the whole title on author's protection. So I just leave the floor to you and feel free to take as much time as you want and we can dialogue uh, on these issues also uh, more later together. Uh, yeah, thank you, Julia. Thank you uh, very much for the introduction. I will try to a bit relate to your question also for Morgans and, and Zuta said, I definitely agree. Uh, Article 15 is not a solution in itself and it should be a holistic approach. 
However, I think Article 15 is not needed in this holistic approach when it comes to the broad picture. Um, very briefly, we, we should kind of see what Article 15 was supposed to do. So it was supposed to, of course, help when it comes to sustainability of the press sector and support of quality news and information. It was supposed to aid the licensing process and it was supposed to provide this legal certainty uh, in, in the press publishing sector. So just to deconstruct those points, do we have legal certain certainty? Not necessarily. We had copyright regulation that was a bit blurry when it comes to whether copyright applies to what news aggregators and search engines are doing with content or does it not. You, the uh, new Article 15 doesn't, didn't solve all those learnings. It just added a new layer of regulation on top of copyright. So nowadays we have both copyright where the original rights holders usually are journalists. Uh, that the copyright that is then being transferred to publishers. So it's not that publishers didn't really have any right in their hands. They already had a right in their hand. What they got is basically another sword that to some extent is kind of the same as they had before. So when it comes to the licensing environment, does it really help? Again, I don't think so. I think the deals that are being struck nowadays are the same deals that could have been struck using copyright actually because uh, when it comes to licensing article 15 doesn't have this obligation to license so it only says you have to go negotiate with those press uh, press publishers you have to negotiate with platforms so you have to negotiate in table go and negotiate but if platform says hey i don't want to negotiate they can do that because there is no obligation to negotiate built into that this is a right to say you can or you cannot use my content and if you want to use my content you have to pay this is not something that allows them to to say hey you have to use my content and you have to pay for it this is not really how copyright and how neighboring rights work and when it comes to sustainability something building on on what Zusa said uh, so I see nowadays that there is this growing conception that press publishers write in Article 15 actually allows you to negotiate with Facebook, and this is the legal basis for negotiating with Facebook. It is actually not. So when it comes to Article 15, Article 15 applies to online users by informational society service providers. True, Facebook would be an informational society service provider, but it's only when Facebook makes content available. So who actually makes content available? It's users who using a platform make content available. So it's not Facebook. And also coming back to our year 2016 when the press publishers discussion was starting or even 2015 when we already knew that the right is coming, um, the problems that, that we were discussing in Europe weren't about social media. We were discussing problems about search engines and about news aggregators. So the tool that we got in Europe wasn't designed thinking about social media platforms. So it's, I, I know that nowadays because we, we are inspired by what is happening in Australia with the bargaining codes and those deals that are being struck. Generally, we kind of automatically assume that what we have in our hands allow us to, to talk with Facebook as well. But there is a bit of a blurriness in, in there. And I know that uh, Morgans, you especially should, should know about it in Denmark, that publishers are, are strongly pushing to negotiate with, with Facebook. And as, as Susa mentioned, we have this situation about them trying to, uh, to force uh, publishers to kind of give their content for free. But we have to kind of take a step back and see that, that the tool that we have doesn't really allow us to to get money from Facebook as it is. And, and now just when it comes to, share, to the content which is shared by users online. But one good plus uh, about Article 15 comparing to other regulatory responses, it's definitely the guarantee of a fair share of revenue to journalists. This is a big plus of the solution. If the revenues are actually generated that the journalists are getting something out mm. of there, but the minus of the situation is that that the deals that we are being being struck nowadays with Google are not public. So how can we know that publishers are getting their fair share if we are not entirely sure what publishers are getting out of it and how much they are getting on a basis of Article 15 and how much they are getting because content is in the news showcase. 
So this is all a bit blurry and I took a lot of time. So I'll leave the floor with all my points. No problem. I think you, you brought a lot of insights and that's actually, that um, made me think of um, probably also changing a little bit the perspective because right now we are discussing about a new role uh, that has already been approved politically and also processed uh, on a on a legislative uh, side, but probably it's still meaningful for us since since we all seem to have some critical views also on Article 15 and on how the whole process of dealing with copyright in the press sector has been viewed so far. Then probably going back to the uh, famous question, do we need a new right or can we use the rights that we have already and just make clearer in our legislation that there is an obligation to pay um, and an obligation to distribute resources fairly, both from intermediary to publisher and to publisher uh, to, I mean, and from publishers to journalists, probably what we need is more clarity, more legal certainty rather than as Ula, you just mentioned, overlapping layers of regulation that ultimately create more chaos. And in this light, I would actually like to ask you a provocative question. If we look at the problem that Article 15 tackles, which is the unfair distribution of revenues between a, a ever more ever poorer press sector or ever more struggling press sector in a flourishing internet environment um, then do you think we are looking at the right problem or do you think that there are other threats to the press sector because obviously the dilemma is are um, i mean is the biggest money flowing away because of the platforms in their free riding or rather because the platforms allow users, as you also mentioned in your contributions, to navigate the system in a certain way that peer sharing or piracy or copy paste or uh, being fine with just a snippet of a news actually damage the, the press publishers. So people will no longer buy or pay for news. Do you think we are tackling the right problems? And I think I would start with Mogens, who has more the practical take on this. Yeah, it, it, there was many questions in one question. Um, uh, the, the, the starting will, will um, uh, uh, if I, I'm, I'm using the right tool here. Uh, I, I think it, 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 it's one of one of several tools. Um, uh, Ula, Ula, you 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 mentioned uh, that um, you mentioned the, the only what you see as the only plus uh, part of this that that, that we managed uh, during the negotiations, and I can tell you that was really tough negotiations at that time to uh, to, to to get us here to to get us here, and I would have liked to see to to be very frank, I would like to see this uh, also in uh, m many things in a in a different way, but. But you, you know, when you when you get a new uh, directive, you get new copyright uh, system. You, you 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 get what is the what 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 can you achieve in, in in this situation? And that's also why I see this as a first step. In particular, when we now see how it is going to be uh, uh, implemented uh, uh, around Europe, because it's um, uh, it, it is so different ways that that it is dealt with uh, about the. Um, 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 uh, the, the, the economy of the of of, uh, of the of, of news outlets it uh, well the the the, the mistakes or, or the errors are, are, are on, on more sides uh, i mean uh, many news outlets they were very really late themselves to understand to be a part of the digital world uh, and and this has been uh, uh, th this is a big problem also today uh, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't justify that uh, uh, the, the tech giants uh, should not uh, be part of, the, of those who are, who are paying for content. Actually, you can look at them in the way when uh, you, you have all the cable and, uh, and satellite, actually there's also, also the CAPSAT2 directive, which now is modernized 
in a way. So you you also you, you also get pay, payment for streaming, for podcast, etc. Uh, uh, when that are, are used, you, you can compare it because you have those cap cables, you have those uh, satellites, and and they make a huge amount of money uh, to distribute TV, and they pay a part of it as a remuneration for those who are producing the content. And this is the same that should happen uh, for, for, for the Czech giants because they make money on content. Don't come and tell me they don't make money on content. They do, they make a huge amount of money on content. And we have to find the methods. Uh, and and, and, and I, I think copyright, author's right, is, is one, of the, one of the ways where you can, where you, you legally and, and, and in a good way able to, uh, to, to pay your share of that content that you are making money on. Uh, so, so in, in that sense, it's it's important uh, that that we have those possibilities. Um, I'm sure that there are many other ways also to 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 make it possible for uh, to have a, a broad and a big uh, pluralistic media market. It's imp so important for the uh, for our society that we have a pluralistic media market. And, and if if you cannot if you cannot survive. Uh, as a as, as as a media, then it it's, it it makes it makes it difficult to to have this, and you will have really really a lot of mainstream media in Europe. So so it should help on that. Um, I think I had a, a, a thing there, but I can come back uh, to, to to my next point. Thanks. Uh, maybe Shuja or Ula, if you have anything to add to that, are we using the right tool, or if not, which tool could achieve a better result rather than introducing a new right? If I can, uh, I don't think we have the right tool. I must say that the, the longer I think about those things, the closer I go to the solution which will tackle directly the issue that we are having, because what is the issue that, that the press publishing sector is having? It's about the advertising revenue. This is not about your content not being used by platforms, because going back to, the, to, to your introduction to the question, I think we should encourage users to share and discuss news content online. That should be a key because this is the way that you foster public debate. And this is how press actually serves its role in modern democratic societies, as European Commission actually wrote in the justification for, for the press publishers, right? So we definitely shouldn't restrict that. And I don't think this is something which should be seen as a problem that we uh, we are currently having. So fostering this, this discussion. It's another, of course, discussion when it comes to how users behave. And I think when it comes to, to what Morgan said in his first answer about the holistic approach, I think one of the elements is uh, media literacy and education of people when it comes to where do you get your news? How do you treat your news? How do you rely on content? And so on and so forth. So this is yet another issue that should be tackled when it comes to regulation of you know, online press and, and platforms relationship. So those are very different issues. When it comes to, to regulatory tools, I must say that the closer and the more I think about it and the closer I get to it, I'm like, yeah, look at the advertising revenues. So the, 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 the solution that I'm the most kind of favorable to nowadays is basically please tax advertising revenues, take this pot to the press sector and then think about how to distribute it between your publishers, because just um, in this way, uh, because we, we have this problem that if we are having uh, negotiations between different actors, we have the differentiation of there is this more favorable treatment of big as an established player, less favorable treatment of new entrants to the market, digital born brands and so on and so forth. So one of those solutions would be do not make them negotiate, but try to get this pot on the top-down approach and actually think more about what this money can do and how it can better help and go directly into the advertising for the advertising revenue and not to think about the use of content itself. But this is kind of my my thoughts. But basically, I, I don't think copyright is, is the path to take as a regulatory tool. Thanks. I see Morgan's with the hand raised, but I think Shuja wanted to add something. Yeah, uh, you are muted and I'm failing not to. No, you're still muted. Sorry. 
we don't hear you i'm failing to unmute you now, now can you hear me yes okay so i totally agree with Ula and uh, uh, to add i don't think that royalty paid by by the platforms will replace replace the lost uh, advertising revenue so i think that another solution might be found or should be found and uh, i i talked about the three-sided market that uh, users or or visitors content providers and advertisers and i think that publishers now try to find uh, new ways to get money and basically from from the users so paywalls and uh, value-added contents uh, or supports uh, might be paid by the the users uh, to to the publishers and this might be a way to to find the survivors for the publishers i think so basically the market might change i think thanks and this actually reminds me also of the fact that this provision in the form when it was article 11 before turning article 15 and becoming almost a teenager um, it, it used to be called the link tax so even though i i actually uh, fought against this labeling because i found it to be extremely misleading uh, actually it conveys an idea which may point at the right solution but is very different from what article 15 says so Probably this misleading feeling was pointing at the right direction. Morgans. No, I, I just want to, to um, uh, comment uh, on what Ulla uh, said about uh, media literacy, uh, because um, we have to be careful not to mix media literacy with authors' rights. Uh, well, uh, authors' rights is a, is, is a part, then more authors' rights is a part of the understanding uh, what, what's going on in, in, in the media. Um, what, when, when you have your author's rights, you can uh, you can uh, follow your your work. You can make sure that it is not uh, it is not me because if it misused, how however it is, I mean you you must have a possibility uh, to to do that because uh, it it creates mistrust uh, if your content is suddenly used in a different way. I mean if you come as a journalist, put an article in a newspaper. It is distributed. That's and I, I, I completely agree that we want our things to be read and to be everything and to be shared and so on and so forth. But at the same, but suddenly when it is changed to 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 be a part of something else, uh, then you, you 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 need to have tools to protect your work because your sources could be harmed if uh, your content is suddenly used differently from what you. What, what, what was the, the idea? That's why you need your byline. That's why you need your photo credits. Uh, it, it's uh, and 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 uh, you, you also you you need to be remunerated for for these things because without remuneration, without your economical rights, it's not possible to uh, to uh, fight and to uh, protect your moral rights. So this is one side of the middle. The other side, well, it, it, it's two okay sides. I mean, the, the other one is about is about the media information literacy. And I totally agree that this is something we should pay much more attention to that we have done until so far. Uh, but we, we, we need this, uh, this uh, 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 author's rights. Uh, we, we, you cannot just leave it, leave it out. And I think it was on time that also the tech companies have to pay for the use of, of, of I, I know it, but they have they pro have platforms where they provide users to put content on, but they are doing this and they have a, a responsibility for that. So it's on time that they also pay their part of the bill. So, and, and their part, and, and, uh, and, and, and there could be two parts of the bill, that's absolutely right. There could be another part of the bill also, as you have just mentioned, but one part is actually uh, the, the, the author's right and copyright because that uh, uh, makes it uh, may, may give, give them um, a responsibility uh, when, when they do so. And the good thing is here that the responsibility is not 
at the users level, it is at the uh, um, platform level. Thanks. Any reaction to that or any questions? Sure. Yeah, just to clarify, I'm not against journalists having rights and especially having moral rights and being recognized and having the byline. Definitely not my stand. I think as every author, when it comes to protection of their own work, they should be able to do that. Uh, what I'm saying is I don't believe that addition of a new layer of protection that vests with publishers actually solves the issue or is any answer to this issue, because we do have to distinguish when we talk about the copyright perspective on things, when it comes to use of content, when it comes to, you know, reusing of your work. And when we talk about, you know, using uh, a title and a link to your work, those qualitatively, when it comes from, from copyright perspective, are very different things. And I will say something quite controversial um, now, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, because there is uh, this threat in the discussion nowadays, okay, uh, we have search engine, search engine, because press publishers are giving content, so it's becoming more attractive, so people use search engines more likely, so we are giving them the, this new right. However, why are we giving this right only to publishers? Why aren't we giving this right to all the other suppliers of content? Because it is their content who also contributes to the search engine, and their content makes search engines a, a valid tool on the internet. So why is it only press publishers that are getting it and, you know, giving this right only to, you know, 11 words and a link or whatever amount of words and a link, aren't we starting a bigger discussion about how internet is actually functioning? And this is, this is why I think term, Tim Berners-Lee, so one of the inventors of the World Wide Web, uh, started to speak up in a discussion in, in Australia because uh, in the European Union, our press publishers right does exclude hyperlinking. The Australian solution does not. It actually covers linking and does it so explicitly. So there are those like bigger discussions because I'm, I'm genuinely not against authors having their rights. Authors should have their rights and this is very close to my heart that authors have enumerated. But we have to be considerate how, how much of the content is actually used. Why are we treating this group in a very different way and whether treating this group in, in that particular way, aren't we undermining of, of how internet works and how copyright is applied on the internet. So just, just to clarify, not against authors having their rights, definitely not. <laughs> Thanks. I think if I can add also my, my personal two cents, and I see Morgan's already with the thumbs up, so definitely we found a common ground. Um, I definitely share the view that um, together with the economic imbalance that uh, directly interest press publishers as investors almost, or as editors of someone else's content and the platforms as even farther away in the line of exploitation of this content, um, I think the digital era is really, and probably Marius can also give, I mean, uh, agree with us, uh, is showing how much we need to protect journalists. So the fact that I don't know you, but I get shocked every time I read some digital newspaper and I don't see the name of the journalist. Um, and I think that what we are discussing here is actually a potential big change in our, at least legislation and probably our practical modus operandi in the sector, but only a very, very, very tiny bit, which is the last sentence of the article, actually gives protection to authors. Because all the rest of the article, in my view, is not about authors. So it just almost concludes by giving this bounty to journalists, but that's probably not enough to balance a whole system. So I share with you the the, the feeling that a holistic approach should put the journalist again in the center of, of our regulation. But we don't have journalists only, we have all, also end users. So as much as we can sit down and try to figure out what is the best way to protect journalists, 
we still know that a space in the public debate shall be um, always free from copyright protection or other legal restrictions for people just to talk and discuss about current events. So in this light, do you think Article 15 in particular does a good job in, um, let's say, avoiding that everything online will get paywalled? My father this morning just called me to ask how come I cannot read news now that I'm retired if I'm not subscribed to anything? So fig I mean, he was asking me a technological question, like how can I subscribe? I, I'm a mess with the smartphone. But um, actually, this is very close to today's topic, right? Are we facing a paywallization of information evermore or not? And I see Shuja is is on top requesting to speak yes please no, yes. You? okay sorry uh, uh pay I, I want to make a slight distinction because bit because paywall is between the relationship of user and publisher so it's it's a contract that you pay for the content and uh, the publisher gives you the article and the uh, article 15 is different because uh the publishers the third side of the market so the publishers uh, waiting for money from from the platform so i think this is a, a slightly different problem this paywall and uh, sure public inter in time of covid uh, this is a very interesting question because uh, you should know about uh, masks and uh, all all the information about uh, the dangers and the, the public interest, but I think that this is not uh, about Article 15. Okay, I was using actually. You are absolutely right. The 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 image of the paywall is not the more accurate on on a legal note. Uh, I I see the the paywall also being a phenomenon online, but I don't know if Morgan and Ola um, agree with that. Well, I mean, uh, um, things go in circle, uh, circles. Um, uh, when I was young, uh, I had to pay for my newspaper. I had to pay for, if I want uh, access to content, I, could, I had to pay for it. I could go to the library and then I had paid uh, also in, in somehow uh, in, in another way to be able to read the newspapers there. Uh, we have had, and, and, and here's the, the, the place where many media failed. We had that uh, 10, uh, 10, 15, maybe 20 years uh, where everything was for, for free. Uh, and, and then you, you start to realize that you cannot make money. You cannot make a, a, a business model uh, by giving everything for free. It's impossible. You won't get uh, good journalism out of it. You won't get uh, good content for the, for, 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 for the public. Uh, so, so you, I, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it, it's obvious that you have to pay for content. And you have to find the ways to pay for content. You cannot just expect that I can get everything for free without without uh, uh, paying anything. Uh, and it, it's it's a damage that I cannot now suddenly get all for free that I want to get. This is not the case. Uh, so you have to find also also the society have to find uh, find ways to make sure that you have a pluralistic media to find the media support models uh, to find ways maybe uh, give vouchers to uh, vouchers to, to to young people so you can. You can buy content on uh, regardless what media you want to to, to subscribe on, uh, but but this is something different from the as you said from the from the uh, article when we talk, talk about the, 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 the copyright and it uh, and, and looking looking at the at the, the article it is not I mean you the users are, are still uh, able to share the content on social media and link to online newspapers etc. You're not. I mean, the responsibility is not at the users, it's, on, it's at, the, uh, at, at the content uh, providers, it's at, at the, the platforms. So, um, but, but I think we are also now going with it in, in circles when we are discussing these, these, these things. Uh, but, but what you said, Julia, is, is actually in many ways important because when you just look narrowly at Article 15, it, it, you, you have to you have to see it in a, in a more in a broader perspective and that's why as i said in the beginning this is uh, this, this is not the final solution 
I, I, I totally agree that there are many uh, there are many problems in this, and in particular, the, one of the biggest problems is the way that uh, that it is um, uh, turned into into, into uh, solutions around Europe, across Europe, because it's so many different ways, and 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 uh, if even the publishers cannot agree among themselves how to do this, then it is uh, and it is problematic. Uh, we could make something out of it if we uh, did it. If it really joined forces, and then we could maybe also find the next steps to make it better. Thanks. I think we are approaching also our last five minutes. So, Ula, if you have anything to add on this discussion on there is no free lunch, uh, but there is also an internet world evolving. So, how do we, how do we um, sort of tackle all these uh, imbalances, and then? I will check if we have any short question on the streaming chat. So if I if I just kind of build on what Morgan was saying about the implementation, what is happening in Europe. So I must say that after all those years of very controversial, heated discussion, it is quite disappointing what is happening nowadays mm -hmm. with the implementation. We all know that implementation of the directive in general is very, very much delayed. On the, our cutoff date of 7th of June, we had three countries that implemented directive in full. On top of that, we have uh, France and Denmark that only implemented Article, uh, not only, but among implemented Article 15. Uh, so we have not not much actually happened. So it's still very early to say whether you know Article 15 helps or help did something, didn't do something. Personally, I, I, I think we'll see those deals being struck very randomly between platforms and publishers. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what will happen in Denmark, actually seeing that the, the mechanism of extended collective uh, mm. licensing has been implemented in Denmark. It's actually also in books in, in Czechia. Uh, so uh, also, and I think Hungary in its implementation also allows that it might be collective extended licensing. So we'll see how it also goes in Hungary. So those countries are kind of curious examples of whether it will help publishers, it, whether publishers will actually go and negotiate together. Uh, however, yesterday I actually attended another event on advertising in the press publishing sector and someone from, from Denmark, a small, small publisher, re representation of small media, basically said we are not interested in negotiating because we are benefiting too much of being on those platforms that we don't want to get into that. So I'm kind of curious what will be the dynamics uh, when, when it comes to the implementation. Uh, but my safe guess is end of 2022 as uh, some sort of deadline that something will actually happen and we'll see uh, those first effects because we need to remember that France, the first country that implemented the provision and some time ago, still the publishers are making their deals. So it's still an ongoing process and we still do not have the final decision of the competition authority. So we had the interim decision that forced Google to enter negotiations, but we still don't have the final decision in this case, whether Google can actually be forced into negotiations with, with publishers. So it's still very, very much of an ongoing process. Uh, we do have also, when it comes to alternative solutions, of course, we have push from uh, from media organizations, but Morgans, I also think from journalist organizations to be considered in a part of a package of the DSM the, uh, and Digital Markets Act. So what will happen in there? So we'll kind of, it's still very fast forward moving uh, situation. And also I think the journalism uh, or the media sector itself is very much changing. So it's not that it's set. I remember uh, one of the chapters of my dissertation uh, that I started writing in 2015 on my PhD was on the media sector, wrote it in 2016, had to completely rewrite it in 2019 when I was actually defending because so many things have changed and mm -hmm. the success stories fell and the failures rise and so on and so forth. So very dynamic sector, I think very different solutions uh, to consider and tackle and definitely article 15 for those who believe in it and those who do not believe in it, I don't think it will be the only solution out there and many other things need to happen. Great, this brings us actually to the future and also to our very last minute. 
I don't see any question in the chat, so I encourage everyone to use this, this two minutes if they have any comment or question to raise um, in the chat box. Uh, otherwise, I would just ask you for literally 10 seconds each, uh, what is your wish? I mean, we, we have highlighted uh, definitely pitfalls and critical aspects, maybe some silver lining also behind these new rules. Um, what is your wish? What do you want, uh, I mean, in light of the current reality to, to see happening? And if you don't have an answer to that, then the alternative question I have for you is, what would you have suggested the European legislator back in 2015 or 16 uh, to have done better? I mean, if you don't see any hope, then going back in time, what would you have changed? I think, Shuja, we can start again from you and... Uh, I, I agree with Ula again. So I, I don't think that uh, regulators might change the market uh, situation. So maybe not the legislation is the best uh, solution. All right, that was snappy but effective. Uh, Morgans? Um, if I have a, a hope for the future, I would really hope that uh, uh, we in the market can can be able to join our forces because uh, when we come to the next uh, to to update of everything, because there will be update of everything, uh, uh, then we'll be much better prepared uh, to, to make the best possible update of uh, of authors' rights and copyright. Uh, and I have to underline that authors' rights and copyright, and I'm so happy that, we, that you agree on that, that this is, we have to find ways to, 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 to make it sustainable. So join forces, much more joining forces in Europe. Great. Ula, last word is yours. So when it comes to going back to 2016, I wish we did not implement press publishers' rights. And if something was needed, the presumption of right, that was left very, very much at the beginning of the discussion. I think that was preferred solution. Uh, when it comes to looking for the future, I think the journalist sector should look closely at what is happening with the regulation of online advertising. So a trend that nowadays is gaining into force with, I think, the new uh, the new investigation of the European Commission started only this week. So this is something to look forward to. So trying to think about structural solutions rather than focusing on exchanging money only. So bigger picture rather than smaller picture. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed this. I mean, it was pleasant and insightful and I hope there will be more of this discussion and more coffee face to face on the table. So thank you again. And I don't know if Judith or Eva uh, will stop the recording and close in a couple of minutes, but let me say bye and take care to you all. Bye bye. It's a pleasure to take okay. part and, and a very good discussion. And thank you for all your comments and, uh, and inspiration. It's also inspiring, always inspiring to meet people in, in a way like this. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That was, uh, that was quite great. Always good to have different views on issues. Yeah, absolutely. Let's keep it running. Let's keep the, the ball rolling and definitely as in touch on these topics.